And now it's time for Answers with Eric. Greetings to you today. I hope you've already read Acts chapter 18, verses 12 through 23. I hope you have some questions about it. I hope that some of my questions have been confusing to you because sometimes confusion makes you think a little bit. But in this passage, we are going to see God provide protection to Paul, and he does it through an unbelieving heathen. All right, God does do some work in some pretty amazing ways. Also in this passage, the relationship of the Old Testament practices converging with a New Testament dis disciple of Christ with actual, an actual apostle is introduced. So the question comes up, how is a follower of Jesus to treat the teachings and the practices of the law of Moses? And we might get a little bit of insight in that as we look at Acts chapter 18, verses 12 through 23. Um, as, as noted in here, excuse me, uh, an interesting note is Gallio, and that um, he, 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 it's recorded, it's known from historical, from something that was found uh, through archaeology, that he uh, had a two-year term from 51 to 52 AD. So he's introduced, he's mentioned in the Bible, he's confirmed from archaeology, and it actually pinpoints a date for us. And so the time that has passed between um, his first mission trip, when we had a date confirmed there, and this current point in time, we have a time of about five to seven years that have passed. Um, what accusation is brought, I had a little note there, 13, 14, on down into verse number 15. Let me discuss this a second. What is Gallio um, unwilling to judge? And he's, he's unwilling, I want to talk about this a second because of the impact of it. He's unwilling to judge matters about the law of Moses. So the little note says it appears that Gallio considers Christianity as a sect of the Jews and therefore not a new religion. So for Rome, if it's a new religion, we're going to throw you in jail. If it's not a new religion, if it's just some part of the, the law of Moses, which has been around for a long time, then it's, uh, you know, then it's, it's not something new. So Gallio says it's not something new. I'm curious, what do you think? Is Christianity a new religion, or is it a branch of Judaism? Interesting thought, an interesting discussion. I think there's a lot of different angles we can talk about here with it. Um, on down to, we had verse 16. What does Gallio do, uh, then do with the Jews? Um, verse 17, who was thought Sosthenes, and what did they do to him? And did Gallio care? Uh, I want to mention... Uh, this this one because Sosthenes, the leader of the synagogue, he's the he's the one, uh, probably the one who brought the accusation initially against Paul. He is kind of the leader of the Jews, and so so anyhow they start to beat him, but Gallio didn't care, and it's kind of a interesting kind of a comical scene. You know, they brought some they wanted Paul to get beat and uh, to be beaten, to be uh, abused, but instead they're the ones who get beaten and abused. It kind of shows, unfortunately, some of the disrespect that the Jews have gotten throughout time, throughout all of history. But the question is, who is they? It says they started to beat him, and Gallio didn't care. Who is they? That's a, you know, I doubt it was uh, soldiers or Roman soldiers or anybody, but and certainly wasn't the Jews beaten up themselves. So likely, I think this is probably some citizens, some non-Christians of Corinth. I don't think the Christians, I don't think Paul and those who were following him, supporting him, would have turned and started beating, beating this synagogue ruler. That's not how they work. So it's probably some citizens, some Roman citizens, um, or just citizens of that city, not necessarily even Roman citizens. Um, question for verse 18, it says, how much longer does Paul remain in Corinth? And, you know, it says many days longer. So you know, try and figure that one out. Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it six months? We don't know, but it seems to me that this incident incident uh, occurred after he had been there for a year and six months, as verse 11 indicated. So I think he, he'd been there for a year and six months, and then there's some more time that passes after this little incident before Gallio. Uh, what is his destination? You know, Syria, and that's where Antioch is located. That's his home base. And who goes with him? Priscilla and Aquila go with him. Now, maybe there are others, but, you know, it's 
Right now, it is, it's precise to say that Priscilla and Aquila go with him. And I want to focus on that for a second just to remind you of that and let it sink in because that's going to come into play here later. Uh, the question here then is, has Paul given up his Jewish traditions? And a cross-reference for Numbers chapter 6, verse 2, verse 5, verse 13, verse 18. And the answer is, it seems no, uh, for in Centria, and that's right beside Corinth. They're real close. It's kind of, they're on both sides of the isthmus that they're located. I'll show them up here in a minute. Um, he seems to make a Nazarite vow. So when you flip back to Numbers chapter 6, and you look at verses 2, verse 5, verse 13, verse 18, you're going to see that, that what Paul, you know, just this idea of taking a vow, and then what he does in the, the upcoming verses, um, how, he, how he acts after he takes this vow, it really does seem to indicate that, you know, what you find out about a, a Nazarite vow, which is really still kind of mysterious, even after reading number six. Uh, but he, it seems like he does do that. So kind of that thought of, you know, Paul's a Christian. He's a believer in Jesus. He follows the way of Jesus. But he's going back to this old law and doing uh, something in the Jewish tradition of taking a Nazarite vow, so it seems. Um, verse 19, the question says, where does Paul go after Centria? And what does he do there? Um, so after Centria, he goes to Ephesus, and he leaves Priscilla and Aquila there. And then he headed the to the synagogue to reason with the Jews. And the question for the next verses, for 20 and 21, says, how do the Jews respond to his teaching? And what does Paul do? So they asked Paul to stay longer, you know, which, you know, a lot of times after the first week, they're interested. But then after a week or two after Paul gains ground, you know, that's when they usually turn against him. Um, but right now they're interested. So they asked Paul to stay longer. So they are receptive to his teaching, at least at this point. But he refuses their invitation and he leaves. But he does tell them that he will return if God wills. So now I want you to consider, you know, it may be he's already got his eyes set on going to Syria. It's already been mentioned. We're going to see in a minute um, where he actually goes to when he leaves this, um, leaves Ephesus, Ephesus. And he may have been in a hurry to get to Jerusalem, is what I'm going to point to, to fulfill his vow. So that does point to the idea that it is a Nazarite vow. He has some, some sacrifices at the end of this vow that he needs to make at the temple. Uh, verse 22, the question says, where does Paul sail to? And it says Caesarea. And it also indicates that he went up to the church. What church do you think Paul went up to? Well, this is the church in Jerusalem. And whenever you hear the words went up to, that's probably talking about Jerusalem. So then Paul went down to where? He went down to Antioch of Syria. So uh, let me uh, try and get to uh, share a screen here and, um, and try and point to this map a little bit. So a real quick uh, fall through of where, uh, hopefully you can see this, I'll make it just a tiny bit bigger. So in this, um, on this map, you see Macedonia, this is, this is the, uh, second missionary uh, trip of Paul, and he has been uh, called over to Macedonia, and um, he ends up at Berea. Uh, Thessalonica, he was run out, but he comes to Berea. That's at this flag here. Thessalonica is for this little tiny dot. He came down, Paul left Berea on his own, and he came down to Athens. He preached there in Athens, and that is uh, for this flag. From Athens, he goes to Corinth, and he runs into Aquila and Priscilla. And they had come from Rome. He meets them. If we zoom in a little bit here. Come on, old girl. My computer's just a little bit slow today. You're going to see the city's uh, kind of highlight here is the isthmus between these two large masses, and that was Athens, where he came from. He came to Cor Corinth. He's in Corinth for a year and a half, and then probably a little bit more time. 
when he leaves Corinth with Priscilla and Aquila, he comes to this city of Centria. This is where he makes this vow, and he's getting ready to, uh, to journey across the sea here. So he goes from Corinth to Ephesus, and it will uh, get there in a second, from Corinth to Centria, sails across to Ephesus after making the vow in Centria, and then from Ephesus, he goes to Antioch via Jerusalem is the title over here. So he sails from Ephesus, comes down to Caesarea, lands there, comes, goes up to the church, and just this map also assumes the same thing, that it is going up to the church in Jerusalem, and there Jerusalem shows up, and from there he heads down, of course on a map we always think about this going up, but he heads down to Antioch via this probably a well-known road, so he ends up back at his home base. Now, back to my outline here just the, so that's the that's the you get a good picture of what was going on there a lot of mo movement in this time without a a lot of details about some of this but we're going to find um some interesting information coming up about priscilla and aquila and somebody they meet that's coming up in the next lesson and this it, there's some other things that are happening while paul is going on his way and gets back to his home base so that's, that's the lesson for today. It's kind of a, some neat, interesting things here. And probably the most interesting thing for us to discuss now is, number one, if you have any questions about anything that are, were on the, uh, the question sheet, um, anything, any questions, just, just let me know. Any, any thoughts about the, uh, the scriptures there, let me know. Um, put it down in the comments here below. Uh, but also in particular, I really want to challenge you to, to write down, what are your thoughts about Christianity being a new religion? What do you think about this, this thought? Is it a new religion or is it a sect of Judaism? So give your thoughts on that below and any other insights you see from the passage. And thanks for studying. Thanks for participating. Uh, and thanks for loving the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength.